Shelling out for the capital's huge rents can be a big struggle for many businesses. And that was exactly the problem faced by a unique film company down in Rotherhithe, except they weren't prepared to give up without a fight and came up with an innovative solution to the financial pressures facing them with a little help from local people and some celebrity supporters. Joanne Good went to find out more. These narrow streets in Rotherhithe could be the setting for a Charles Dickens novel. And this story both involves the great writer and could have been written by him. Over 30 years ago, a group of filmmakers made this disused riverside warehouse their home. They went from strength to strength, and they were Oscar-nominated for their adaptation of Charles Dickens' Little Dorrit, but as their fortunes rose, so did the area. And in the words of Dickens himself, they really were hitting on hard times. The rent went up, and they were struggling to survive. Little by little, we found out we had to pay more rent, right to the extreme of paying a quarter of a million per annum. For us, it was just unsustainable. What a loss it would have been to, to the British film and theatre industry, because it's absolutely the best costume house in England. It's a unique place. I hope I get to go back there. I hope they do some more films. Its closure would have meant that a rather unique piece of London's past and present would disappear. This place reeks of history. Each room tells a different story. There are studios, carpentry workshops, and even a picture research library. But it's their period costumes they're renowned for. Characters have been dressed here for films such as A Passage to India, Pride and Prejudice, the Young Victoria and Little Dorrit. How many years have you worked here now? Uh, 26. 26, 26 years. years yeah. And so how many films do you think that would be? Well, all these boxes, uh, they're every film that we've done, and that's the remnants to every film. Lots of period drama. Lots of period drama. Yeah. And, and some of the actors that have worked in them? Um, Robert Patterson, Kira Knightley, Donald Sutherland. They've all come through the doors. So they actually come here? They actually come here for the fittings. Big blockbuster movies and West End stage plays require everything to be just right, so they have to pay much attention to detail. One man even has a collection of old sewing machine attachments just for making buttonholes. It's a, it's a very nice piece of engineering which uh, allows the um, machine to actually do this stitch, which is unique to making a buttonhole. So you are sans expert buttonhole? Y yes. It's my contribution to each of the costumes, yes. Olivier Stockman doesn't just make buttonholes, though. With movie producer Richard Goodwin and renowned designer and film director Christine Edzard, he is the driving force behind this place. When he first arrived from Paris, they were renovating these premises with their own money in an area that was little more than a wasteland. Rotherhides had gone through a really tough time because the, um, in the 60s when they shut down the, the docks, the, all the businesses went away, all the employment went away. You know, when there's an area that no one wants, it gets invaded by artists and people who are very creative, who are very inventive and reacquire the space, reinvent it for their purpose and make it very nice. And then, because they've done that, people say, oh, that's lovely, this place, oh, I'd like to be there, you know. And then that brings in people who haven't done that much, but they've got the money to re-innovate um, buy themselves a loft and do this, do that. And then the artists are asked to get out. Many small artisan businesses left. But shooting period films in this setting was perfect. And by then, Sands felt very much part of the area. And many generations of skilled local people still work there. So moving wasn't an option. Uh, this is Jennifer, friend's daughter, fourth generation. Fourth generation? <laughs> fourth generation. Mum's retired now. And then I've got my daughter, Nicola, over there. So, Nicola, what age were you when you first came here with your mum? I was three, coming here, growing up, just running around doing things, working on the sets. I've stayed here, I've worked all the hours here. I've done everything here. I had my wedding here. Um, well, I actually went to school not very far from here, so a ten or so minute walk, and they came 
and invited all of the people in my year to come for the children's version of a Midsummer Night's Dream. And now you're back. How did that happen? Um, well, I'm actually still at university now. The tutors organised like a trip down to Sands Films to see all the costume studios, have a look at the costumes that they've made in the past, how they work, etc. And so I decided to come back and help them during my summer. Do you still live around the corner? Yeah. <laughs> 95-year-old Lilla worked on many films here for 26 years, then retired. But she is still very much part of the fabric of this place. When my husband died, I was at home all day. And then they said, would you like to come in for a couple of days? I don't get paid for it. I, I didn't want pay, you know. But I just like to come and sit in here. And then Christian said, can you sew? She said... <laughs> And then I said, well, I can't see to sew. She said, yes, you can, yes, you can. A 95-year-old quietly sewing in the corner hardly sits easily with today's financial practices. So surprisingly, in this most Dickensian of settings, the film company turned to a very modern piece of financial firepower. The Enterprise Investment Share Scheme and it's enabled them to stay. We hit on the idea of using this government scheme, which is to help small businesses like us to um, obtain funding from investors, from more small investors. People reacted very enthusiastically to the idea. We've actually raised enough money to buy the property and it's owned by several hundred shareholders. London businesses have always had to struggle against high rates and rent though, and arguably it's never been described more poignantly than by Charles Dickens, especially in his tale of Little Dorrit. And that's how one shareholder got involved. Little Dorrit, of course. Of all the strangest names I ever heard, the strangest. Like some place down in the country, the turn, called Favourite Pony. All of us who were in Little Dorrit feel part of the fabric of that place. I don't really know anything about money or finance, but I just thought if I can do something to help Sands, I'm going to do it. Many famous film, theatre and media people bought shares, but lots of local people did too. £500 was the minimum they could invest. I know £500 is a sizeable chunk of anybody's money, but I'm not going on holiday this year because um, I've got other stuff on and I thought, do you know what, I would really, really love to be a part and to buy myself a present. When you consider this place was absolutely derelict when they came in and they'd been here for 36 years and if it had closed it would have been horrendous, I believe, you know, and a great loss to, to uh, Britain. It's as far removed from a film studio as you can imagine. My dresser was a local girl. I mean, that's, that's what it should be like. So the fortunes of Sands are the fortunes of the area. And when it does well, everybody round is thrilled. It's not just about a job or getting a film. It's a place of the heart. Whatever you say about, you know, 20th Century Fox and Universal, all these great places, let them do what they do. That's what they do. Sands does something different.